Today, I'm gonna to walk you through our seven step planning process to help you plan your Disney World trip. So I'm gonna walk you through the seven steps we have for our planning process, but first I wanted to talk about the background of it or why you even need it. The site began 10 years ago and it has had a planning process the entire time. Originally, it was a six day planning process and we tweaked it in the last couple of years to accommodate Disney's most recent changes. We all know there's been a lot of those, but the reason for having any kind of planning process is first of all, to help people who are overwhelmed. Originally, that was me back in a long time ago and I was overwhelmed and could have used a step-by-step -step process. So that's one reason. Two is to make sure you don't forget any important steps. These days you have to have park pass reservations. So it would be a shame to have dining reservations in a park when you didn't make park pass reservations. So the order really matters. And three is just to make sure that you do them in the right order. There is a logical way to go through it. And if you kind of skip around, you can mess up your plans and not end up with a trip that looks exactly how you want. So with all that said, I'm gonna walk you through all the steps now. Step one of our planning process is to pick your travel dates. This may already be decided for you if you are going off of work schedules, school schedules, et cetera. But even so, there is important parts of this step that you should pay attention to. I'll get to that in just a moment. If your dates are more wide open, then you need to narrow down your dates so that you can move through the planning process. We would suggest using our crowd calendar that we put together every year where we predict what we think the crowds are gonna be coming up so that if you are trying to narrow it down, you can maybe pick up a time that is a little less busy than another time or the weather is a little bit better or something like that. But we, we use things like holidays, school schedules, run Disney events, cheer events, years of experience in the parks to put together our prediction. So the crowd calendar, if you already have your dates decided, can be helpful for figuring out what your, your busyness is going to be during your trip. And if you are trying to narrow it down, the crowd calendar is helpful to help you pick the, the uh, best of the options that you have. Within this step also is that you need to check the availability of park pass reservations. Everyone has to have park pass reservations to get into the parks. And I'm not suggesting you make them in this step. I am suggesting you check the availability. Disney has calendars on their website that say which park pass has park pass reservations are available for the parks. Generally, they're going to be wide open if you are planning far enough in advance but it would be a shame to d decide on some dates and then later find out that there actually aren't any park pass reservations. So in this step, just check that availability calendar with your dates and make sure that it's open. But at the end of this step, we need to make sure that we have dates that work for your schedule and have park pass reservations available. That is step one. Step two is to choose where you are going to stay. Now, one of the most popular debates is on-site or off-site, and there are pros and cons of both. One of the pros of off-site is usually cost because Disney hotels are expensive. It may also be availability because the Disney hotels are often sold out. So off-site is definitely an option. On-site perks might be worth it to you depending on your situation. You do have a little bit of an advantage when it comes to advanced dining reservations. There's a little bit of an advantage when it comes to individual lightning lane selections and on-site guests do get early entry to get into the parks every day 30 minutes early. So you'll have to decide, you know, which one of those makes sense. If you decide off-site or on-site, then within that category, you'll have to figure out which hotel makes the most sense for you. We have resort tours of all of the on-site hotels to help you narrow that down if you want to stay on-site. But at the end of step two, you need to decide where you're going to stay and go ahead and book it. Step three is to make a daily plan. And what that means here is to decide where you're going to be each day of your trip. That will likely be theme parks most days. And you'll have to figure out for your trip how many days you're going to spend in each park. You'll have to decide if you want to go somewhere that's not at Disney World. Maybe there's a water park, maybe there's a rest day, etc. You kind of need to figure out each day of your trip where you're going to be. You may decide that you want to do multiple parks in one day and that will help uh, figure out which tickets you need as well, which I'll talk about in just a second. We have always suggested having a daily plan for various reasons, but now it is imperative because of those park pass reservations that I just mentioned. So after you decide where you're going to be each day, then you can do two things. One is it will tell you which park tickets you need. So if you're just gonna go one park a day and not hop, then you just need base tickets. If you do want to hop and go to multiple parks, then obviously you're gonna need a park hopper for that. 
The other thing is the park pass reservation. So I talked about in step one, checking the availability calendar just to make sure that they are available. But in this step, I'm telling you to go ahead and make the park pass reservations that match the park that you want to be in each day of your trip. That is step three. Step four is to decide how you're gonna get to Walt Disney World. We did not used to have this step in the process at all, but with the addition of the Park Pass Reservation System, we wanted to emphasize this step after the Park Pass Reservations have already been made because there are stories of people being on the plane headed to Disney World and there are no Park Pass Reservations available. So we want to avoid that, so we are emphasizing this step here. If you are driving, this step is much easier because you just have to plan the road trip part, but if you are flying, then you need to plan your flights and make sure those are booked. So the emphasis here is just in making sure this is done after the park rest reservations so you don't end up on a plane headed to a park that's not gonna let you in. That is step four. Step five, plan your dining. So obviously, if you have done any bit of research into planning Disney World trips, you know the dining reservations can be one of the trickiest parts, particularly for the popular locations, and that includes the character meals. So you will need to figure out where you want to eat um, during your trip. And the reason it is in this order of the process is that having your daily plan can help you decide where to eat because eating where you're going to be already or near where you're going to be is going to save you a lot of trouble in transportation time. One of the biggest mistakes that I made on my very first trip that I planned many years ago was that I would hear about a good meal and think, yeah, I'll just book that for dinner and didn't realize that we were going to end up on buses 45 minutes each way to get there when like on that trip we were staying at the boardwalk and there were lots of restaurants nearby. So I would suggest that you book something that is at the park where you're going to be or at your resort or near where you're going to be. That way you don't have a lot of transportation time going and coming because I think that is something that's really hard to grasp if you've never been. It is twice the size of Manhattan. So getting to and from is not quick, especially if you're using this transportation, um, particularly the buses. So I would suggest that after your daily plan, you pick your dining based on those plans. And then if you have table service restaurant plans, you need to go ahead and make those 60 days beforehand to increase your odds of getting them. If you happen to be planning less than 60 days out, then this changes a little bit. And I would suggest that you get dining that's important to you, whatever is available, if there's any available during your trip, and then make your daily plan around that. So I would swap the steps because you have to just kind of go where there's availability. However, if you're more than 60 days out, then I would suggest making your daily plan as we already talked about, and then making your dining reservations in this step to optimize your plans the best way. Step six is to plan your park touring. So in the past, this step really was about kind of figuring out what rides you wanna go on and then putting an order down that you wanted to do them in. That is a little bit different now. You still need to decide what rides you're going to go on. You know, what do you think you're gonna be interested in? Or if you have little kids, are you only doing things they are interested in? Are you gonna to try to do bigger rides and take turns on those using the rider switch system? You need to narrow it down. You're not gonna be able to do everything. It took me years to be able to do all of the attractions in the park. So you're not gonna do it in one trip. So narrow it down and then get familiar with the Genie Plus system. And that's going to be one of the trickiest parts of the whole planning process is learning the Genie Plus system, which can save you some time in lines, but it does cost money. Even if you do a little bit of research and decide not to do it, at least you will know how it works and you could choose to get it if you, if you want. I would do the narrowing down the rides and learning about the Genie Plus system as a minimum on this step and try to put them in some kind of order if you can't. It's tricky now with the Genie Plus system, so because we don't know when we're going to get to go on those rides because it's going to be based on Genie Plus availability. Um, but we do have park touring advice that we have on the website where we, we tell you like this is the time of day we suggest going on these attractions and things like that that can help you kind of put together a step-by-step -step plan. I don't recommend doing your plans from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. That's a little too rigorous. What we su usually suggest doing is planning your morning out so you go through lunch and you have all of the sort of high priority things and leave your afternoon kind of flexible. You may stay in the park and do attractions. You might wanna take a break. You might wanna go swimming, but I would at the very minimum try to plan your mornings out as well as you can. And the last step in the planning process, step seven, is to add extra magic. And really what this means is to add personal touches to your trip. It doesn't have to cost money or a lot of money, but it can depending on your interests. You can make countdowns for your trip. You could have matching t-shirts. 
You could watch movies on Disney Plus that relate to the attractions you're going to be going on in the parks, or you could spend some money on a dessert party or a Baby Dubai boutique reservation or going to Joy Depot, things like that. Just personal things that work with the personalities of your group. I think a lot of people expect Disney to create the magic and a lot of times they do, but you can do things on your own to increase the odds or to customize it as well. So that's what this step is all about. And I would encourage you to just sort of tweak your plans based on your group's needs. That is the seven step process. If you would like to have a worksheet, we have a worksheet on the website that you can fill out as you go through the steps so that when you get done, you have a one pager that sort of summarizes what your trip is gonna look like. And we can link to that in the description. But any questions you have, please leave those in the comments and uh, thank you for watching.